To be transparent is to be see-through. It's to allow light to pass through so the objects behind can be distinctly seen. When looking at a person, such as the one above, several traits can be determined by just from visual appearance, such as a person's race, economic status, interests, or even gender. When that trait is gender, it can be kind of confusing to try to categorize someone that doesn't fit into the typical binary standards. And their transness, however, is transparent or see-through. They only view them on cis-normative faces. The degree to which a transgender person is viewed can be described on two opposing concepts. And these two opposing concepts are put on a spectrum of passing and being misgendered. Passing is when a person looks enough like their identified gender to seem like they were assigned it at birth. This, for many trans people, is seen as the ultimate goal. However, this can also enforce gender roles and may not adhere to a person's, or especially a trans person's, true interests or needs. For example, for a small trans guy like me, it would take years of HRT, which is hormone replacement therapy, maybe top surgery, maybe a couple extra inches to look like I was born male. But maybe that's not what I truly want. Maybe that's really uncomfortable to go through. And this also enforces what other males, perhaps cis males, people who are born cis, or born cis, born male, um, should look like as well. And that's not exactly how our society works. It's a little bit more free form than that. But, and also not all trans people wish to go through these, or through these procedures. But if they don't, they have a fear of not being taken seriously and of being misgendered. Being misgendered is the fear, or being misgendered is being perceived as the gender that you are not identifying as, and it's most commonly the gender that you were born as. For many trans people, this can be, or this can lead to increased anxiety or depression, and just a lot of feelings of discomfort, and it's just a really uncomfortable situation. For me, when I'm misgendered, it just makes my heart sink. It makes me feel like I can't really stand up for myself, and it's just not, it's just really uncomfortable. I don't know what to do in those situations. I feel like I don't have a say in my own identity, um, and it feels like I'm not doing good enough as a person, as a man, to be who I want to be. And due to these two concepts, passing and being misgendered, people are put on a sort of all or nothing scale. You either pass or you don't. The world sees through their trans identity and views them on only cis-normative standards, leaving behind only conformity. Even when a person is not cis, they're expected to conform to looking either fully male or fully female, and their life is completely dependent on how well they do that. Regardless of whether they're being misgendered or whether they're passing, as long as you don't look trans, then it's acceptable. I was watching a video the other day about someone who was speaking, and they were talking about how important it was for other people, like trans people, to receive medical treatment, um, specifically like hormone replacement therapy. Um, and when it's given, when hormone replacement therapy is given enough, at a young enough age, it's easier for trans people to transition and look more like their identified gender. And this person was promoting this strategy because it's easier to transition through this. And if they get this, these hormones at a young enough age, they're able to look cis. They're able to pass easier. And he even said that they're able to look normal and they're able to achieve beauty through this. And while this may seem good that kids, or not even kids, but people are getting them at a young enough age when they feel ready, um, it just, it more expresses that we don't want, that we may be willing to support trans people, but we're not willing to support them when they look like trans people. We're more willing to support them in their journey to conforming to cis standards, that we want them to look not like themselves. For me, since I have not transitioned, it is rare for people to use my name or pronouns. Whether I am called by what I prefer depends on how accepting they are of my identity. 
and whether I am brave enough to correct them. Even though I pretty much look trans, a lot of people don't really go by that. Some will call me by my name and pronouns and others won't. I live by two separate identities, just depending on how willing they are to cooperate with my lifestyle. It doesn't matter who I say I am, it just matters on how they view. What matters more is that my very identity is an ethical debate. People debate over my existence while I'm standing right next to them. This is what I mean by transparent, that as a trans person, you can't speak for your identity, that you can't speak for yourself, that your identity is up to the interpretation of others, no matter where you go. To summarize, the options a trans person has are limited to three. Imagine that you're a trans person for a second, that you have three options ahead of you. One option is the option of passing. You could pay thousands of dollars and submit to gender stereotypes. And um, I mean, this is a lot of money to do that. And maybe you don't really want to. But I mean, you would fit in with your identified gender, and people would call you by your preferred name and preferred pronouns and et cetera without much hassle. The second path is the path of misgendering, and you choose not to transition and stay as you are. However, this can also lead to discomfort and just feelings of discontent within yourself because you know that it's just not right, and people are perceiving you as who you're, you're not. And then the last path was the path of gender expression, where you just choose to dress however you want to, and you, know, um, you just choose to do whatever you want. You can express yourself just freely. But even this can have really negative effects, because stepping out of the gender norms doesn't always have positive feedback, um, especially in our society. And it can face ridicule and violence, even. And I, want, I really want to emphasize that being trans is a lot more than just becoming a boy or becoming a girl. It's reaching ultimate self-awareness. And it's, it's desperately trying to explain why you changed your name. And it's a game of guessing of who is accepting and who isn't. And it's having an identity that is dependent on the morality and opinions of others and the perception of others. And to achieve visibility, we can all start by just kind of accepting the more non uh, expressions. And even though from a young age we're taught to associate characteristics with maybe traditionally male and female, uh, even traditionally male and female might be starting to step out of those boundaries. For example, it might not be uncommon for a woman to not shave her legs anymore, which was traditionally a masculine thing to do. Or maybe men more often will wear skirts or makeup. That's not something we won't see in our society today. Even these people who are taking on a more ambiguous expression, they will receive ridicule sometimes. And it's, it doesn't feel completely safe to do so. But I want to encourage that environment where no matter what kind of gender identity you're taking on or what kind of expression you want to take on, that that's, it's OK to do that, that you can express yourself however you want and identify however you want while still being respected in the way that you want to be. However you identify should be respected, regardless of how you want to dress. And because of this increase of gender expression in our society, it's important that we stop associating gender with appearance, because gender and appearance aren't really linked anymore. Sometimes males won't look like the traditional picture of a male. And sometimes females won't look like the traditional picture of a female. It doesn't matter if they're cis or trans. Sometimes you just can't tell anymore. So instead, we just got to ask. So, and maybe it feels a little weird to ask somebody for their gender or for you know, just how they identify. But a good way to do this is asking someone for their pronouns. Yeah, well, by asking someone for their pronouns, it really just puts somebody's identity in their hands. It lets them have a say in who they are. Instead of just assuming who they are, they're able to express themselves. And it's by asking the question, you're saying, you're openly saying that you want to respect them. Instead of if somebody was misgendering me, for example, I have a fear of like speaking up and I feel like I don't want to interrupt them. 
But if they were just to ask me in the first place or if they were just to normalize it and just straight up say it, then I would feel open to it. I would feel okay. I wouldn't feel weird about it. And neither would they. It would become a normal occurrence to ask for pronouns. And I wouldn't feel uncomfortable at all. So if we normalize the action of asking for each other's pronouns, we wouldn't associate gender with appearance anymore. And we wouldn't have to worry about disrespecting anybody based on their appearance or creating discomfort within our society. Treating trans people, regardless of how far they've transitioned, like regular people, will decrease, the, will decrease the transparency by giving trans people a voice in their identities and letting them know that we care. We all have gender identities and we all deserve to be treated accordingly and respected. This is about promoting a future where we are all respected and we are creating of an environment where we disassociate gender and appearance. The, the spectrums have advanced so far beyond the norm, such as like gender expression and the ambiguous expression of people that I was talking about, that there is just no norm anymore. There's no normal. We're all just human, and we like to express ourselves however we want to. And we can't hold people to these expectations anymore. And trans people, even though they're a growing society, we can't disconnect these things on our own. We need the help of the entire community, cis and trans alike, to help disconnect these things and just create a loving environment to people of all expressions and all identities. And liking what you want, presenting how you want, while still being respected, is a future that we can all look forward to. Thank you.